In this video, you're going to learn to build adamantium bones just like Wolverine to turn your legs and your arms into blades, which is useful if ever uh, because well, it's just awesome, all right? Actually, there's a lot of very good reasons to build strong bones. Not only is it important as you get older to prevent injury, but it's also very important if you hit the gym often, if you're an athlete, in order to prevent injuries that can cause time off of the gym and make you lose your gains. Let's bone. Let's do this. So the human body is changing all the time. It's constantly growing and adapting. That's non-negotiable. The only thing that you get to decide is whether it's getting stronger or getting weaker. And this is true of the bones as well. There's a common misconception that bones are these kind of inert rods in our bodies that never change throughout our lifetimes, when actually this is living tissue just like your muscle and it's changing all the time. In fact, you'll sometimes hear bones referred to as a kind of bank or repository for calcium and other minerals. So basically this is a store that your body can draw on when blood calcium gets low. And this process is carried out by cells called osteoclasts, which burrow into the bone and absorb the calcium back into the blood for you to use. This is a completely normal process that happens all the time. And of course, if bone can be broken down, it can also be built back up and restored. Otherwise, it would just dissolve and you'd be an empty sack of blood and meat. So this is handled by osteoblasts, which are cells which repair. They lay down bone matrix and this is mineralized to increase your bone density. This happens all the time in response to general activity as well as in response to certain exercise which causes micro damage. So just like when you train the muscles and you create micro damage, micro tears in the muscle fiber, you can also create micro damage in the bones and this again gets built back stronger. So we actually have a bone metabolism which handles this process which itself is called bone remodeling. It happens all the time. In fact, every 10 years, your entire skeleton is completely replaced. So we want to create micro damage and the good news is that if you already go to the gym, then you're already doing this on a regular basis. And the best types of exercise to cause enough stress in the bones to increase bone density are weight bearing exercises. So anything where you're holding a large amount of weight on your shoulders or pressing a large amount of weight, basically your compound moves and anything with high impact. So anything where there's a large weight, a large force going through the bones or a jolt going through the bones. So squats, bench press, all your compound movements, they're really good for building up bone density. Likewise, so too are your plyometric exercises. So that means things like clapping press ups or depth jumps, box jumps, anything with an explosive component will create enough shock through the joints and the bones to create that tiny bit of um, micro damage that you need to then encourage an increase in bone density. Of course, you've got to be very careful here with your joints and make sure you're using correct biomechanics. Otherwise, you can create the wrong kind of stress on your bones. Likewise, sprinting is really good. And actually, studies show that sprinters have significantly greater bone density as compared with long distance runners, because of course, it's more high impact. Again, you need to make sure that your gait is correct. You need to make sure that you're wearing the right footwear. So don't just go and pound the tarmac thinking it's good for you. It is good for your bones, but it might not be good for your joints. You need to do it correctly. Um, and likewise, skipping is something you can do at home that will increase your bone density, again, by giving you that little bit of shock and impact. But if you're already lifting heavy weights with squats and deadlifts and bench press, and if you're already doing plyometric exercises, then you've got a very good start. And we can also create micro damage to the surface of the bones by directly impacting on them. And this is what Muay Thai fighters do when they strike against trees in order to not only give themselves tougher and thicker knuckles, but also harder and more desensitized shins. So you can incorporate this into your training if you really want to by kicking against a heavy bag with your shins or hitting the heavy bag with, um, without gloves, but be gentle, especially to begin with, in order to gradually build up the toughness in your hands and your shins. And this is actually a really important thing if you are a trained fighter, because in a lot of real fights, one of the biggest problems is that when you hit someone, the knuckles will break or at least you'll really badly hurt and bruise your hands. So building up the toughness in the fist is actually one of the most practical things you can do as a fighter. Another thing you can do is to try rolling bamboo sticks up and down your shins. And this will not only create a small amount of micro damage in a very controlled manner, but it will also help you to desensitize the very sensitive nerves that live along the shins. This is something my granddad used to get me to do. I had a unusual childhood at times. And then of course there's iron palm training which is used by Shaolin monks and Wing Chun practitioners. It's another form of conditioning for the hands and the palms which involves hitting them against 
sandbags and um, buckets of ice and increasing the grip training and doing finger push-ups and all this hardens the uh, bones and also the strength of the hands and the wrists in order to turn them into more formidable weapons and of course at this point once your knuckles start bulging we are starting to get into Wolverine territory and after all these strikes and hits against the hands they then apply an ointment called a Deet Da Jiao which is a concoction of herbs said to help aid the healing and encourage circulation, reduce swelling and I'm not going to get into that now because there's lots of different potential recipes and tons and tons of potential ingredients and they're all variable in terms of their scientific verifiability but this is what they do anyways. If you want to incorporate something similar into your training I don't recommend that you start smashing your hands against things but what you can do is gently try punching a phone book um, or a large book of some sort or wrapping your knuckles against it. Uh, another option is to do knuckle press-ups on a wooden floor or a stone or laminate floor which hurts at first but over time you'll grow the strength in the knuckles and you can actually see them increase in size. We used to do this at karate training. A guy called Master Ho shows just how far you can take this. Um, he has an invincible finger, ladies. He was on Stanley Superhumans and they demonstrated how by jabbing it into things repeatedly he managed to build up the strength of the bone to the point that he could use it to burst open watermelons just by jabbing his finger straight into it and it's become you know a pretty deadly weapon you can't use it for much else i don't recommend anyone else take it to this degree but it just goes to show how much potential there is for the bones to grow and strengthen and adapt to training if he's able to generate that kind of force and get through that coconut with his finger, he's basically taking the force of a boxer's punch right through the index finger and focusing all that load just on the tip of his finger. Wow, that sounds serious. So yeah, if you want to strengthen your bones, then you need to be doing heavy compound lifts, plyometric explosive exercises, and then potentially if you want to take it a step further, you can try kicking your shins against uh, punch bags, you can try hitting the punch bag, lightly at first without gloves, you can try performing knuckle push-ups, you can use mild iron palm training. It goes without saying though of course that you need to be really careful with all of these things because if you shatter your bones then you're not Wolverine. But of course it's not just a matter of breaking down bone and causing damage, what's also very important is rebuilding it and restoring it just as with muscle training, it's a biphasic process. So how do we make sure that after we've caused that micro damage that the bones are then going to come back thicker and stronger as much as possible. Well first of all nutrition is highly important, you probably know that calcium is crucial for bone health, however this doesn't mean that you should just go out there and eat tons and tons of calcium because there is an upper limit to how much you can benefit from as long as you're within the recommended range which is 1000 to 2000 milligrams then you're going to be okay and if you exceed this it can actually have negative health effects. You can get calcium from uh, milk, from water, um, mineral water, and from a whole load of green vegetables. There are some people that think milk isn't good for um, calcium, they say that you can't absorb it, they say that it leaches calcium from the bones, which isn't true. These, the science doesn't back this up, the research suggests that milk is perfectly fine, dairy is perfectly fine as long as you're not lactose intolerant. And I'm not going to go into it into more depth here, but if you want to read more about that, click the link down below to head over to the full article. And also I'll link to another interesting article um, from Mark's Daily Apple, which is a really good website, and he talks about this and links a lot of interesting studies if you're interested. But of course, if you don't believe me and you prefer not to take milk, that's absolutely fine. There's plenty of other places that you can get calcium from. We also know that magnesium is highly important, of course, and vitamin D, which helps to absorb calcium, the best way to get more vitamin D is to spend time outdoors and if you spend all your time indoors then you get a whole host of bone problems which demonstrates just how important getting more sunlight is. So try and be more active, try and be outside more, it'll have a ton of other benefits as well. Protein and particularly animal protein has been shown to be important for bone health. Likewise it seems that probiotics can be effective for restoring and strengthening the bones and there's also some evidence to suggest that inflammation is bad for your bone health so getting more omega-3 in your diet could help to support bone strength as well. All of the steroid hormones, that means testosterone, estrogen, um, DHT, things like growth hormone will help to build stronger bones as well. And in fact, this is one of the medicinal legal uses of anabolic steroids. It's given to people with uh, weak and brittle bones in order to build them up thicker and stronger. 
there's lots of ways you can support a healthy and normal um, hormone balance, getting more sleep, getting more sunlight, getting um, healthy saturated fats because um, these hormones are created from cholesterol. So I won't go into that in detail here, but again, I'll leave a link in the description down below on how to increase testosterone healthily and naturally. What's perhaps more surprising is that melatonin is also very important for bone health. Melatonin being the sleep hormone, not only because when you sleep, you produce more of these other anabolic hormones and repair damage that you've caused during the day, but also because melatonin itself seems to be linked with bone strength. And there's studies suggesting that if you don't have enough melatonin, then your bones become weaker. So this is another reason to avoid blue light at night time and to make sure you're getting lots and lots of good quality sleep. Then there are hormones that directly control and regulate bone metabolism, things like parathyroid hormone, which encourages um, the osteoclast to break down the bone tissue in order to release the minerals into the blood. And more amazing still is that the bones themselves appear to also release hormones into the body. So for instance, uh, lipocalin or lipocalin 2 is a hormone released by the bones to say that they've had enough minerals from your diet and this acts as an appetite suppressant. So just as your stomach can send signals back to your brain to say that it's full, so too can your bones release signals interpreted by your brain to suppress your appetite. So it just goes to show how incredibly complex our bodies are. Even the bones are actually speaking to our brains and can play a role in things like weight gain. Other hormones produced by the bones or by aspects of the bone metabolism can control our energy metabolism and have all kinds of other effects on our health. So sclerostin, for instance, is produced in order to trigger the release of osteoblasts, and this can increase insulin sensitivity. Then you've got calcin, osteocalcin rather, which is produced by the osteoblasts, and this can help switch the body to a ketogenic state when we're low on carbs, allowing it to burn fat for fuel. So yeah, the bones are super complex, and it really is in our best interest to look after them. So looking after your hormone balance and getting lots of sleep and causing this micro damage and getting tons of minerals will increase the density of your bones because more of those minerals will be incorporated into the formation of the bone, making it stronger. But actually a lot of the strength of the bone comes not from it being solid and hard, but from it being bendy and adaptable. So actually your bones, A, they're hollow, they're not solid. They of course have the bone marrow center, but at the same time, the bone itself, the mineral aspect uses a honeycomb structure which is designed in order to absorb impact and the amount of impact that the bones can absorb is incredible. Even when you're just jumping and running you're taking an impact that's several times greater than your own body weight and there have been stories of people falling out of planes and surviving the landing without breaking a single bone. Partly this was because they landed well, they landed on the side of a hill on a steep gradient or they landed in a haystack but it's still incredible and it's because the bones are able to absorb that impact and bend. That's what they're designed to do. And shaken horrifically, his limp body drops out of the sky a quarter of a mile away. They're not supposed to be rigid and brittle. They're supposed to be bendy like the willow tree that blows in the wind rather than the oak that gets blown over. Pound for pound, bone is stronger than concrete. It has a strength to weight ratio found in no other natural material on earth. But astonishingly, almost half of our bone mass is soft and alive, allowing our bones to bend. So the question you might be wondering is why doesn't this always happen? Why is it that someone can fall out of a plane and not break any bones, but you can trip over and break your arm? And part of the answer is that these people who survived the fall from planes, they invariably tend to faint or pass out and this allows them to go limp and lets the bone do its job whereas normally we tense up when we're expecting an impact we brace and what this does is it prevents the bones from moving properly holds them in place applies forces to them already so that then when we take the impact we're much more likely to cause serious damage so actually the very best thing you can do if you're falling or if you get punched is to go limp and to go with it because that way your bones should absorb more of the impact at the same time, of course, it makes sense to increase your flexibility as much as possible. That way you increase your range of motion and also you reduce the usual reflex to shorten muscle as it elongates and instead you'll allow it to move further without fighting it. And this, in theory, means that if you trip or fall or if you move in an awkward way, you'll be less likely to tense up and snap something or strain something. 
And finally, make sure you're getting lots of collagen in your diet. Collagen actually is responsible for making up a large amount of the bone as well as uh, minerals and it's responsible for the tensile strength of your bone so its ability to be pulled and stretched and also for its elasticity and it helps to make it more springy and spongy rather than just tough and dense. If you didn't have any collagen in your diet then it would be, your bones would be hard but far more likely to break. You can get collagen in your diet by eating more gelatin or by eating things like bone broth which is highly popular right now, it's got lots of health benefits, it's very trendy. So there you go, that's a recipe for stronger bones like Wolverine. You need to be strengthening your bones by increasing the load and the pressure, by doing plyometric exercises, by sprinting and skipping, by lifting heavy weights with compound movements. At the same time you can damage the surface of the bones in order to make them harder and stronger like blades if you want, using iron palm training and kicking against trees if you're kind of crazy. At the same time, you need to make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, you need to look after your hormone balance, eat lots of minerals, lots of green vegetables, dairy products, and you need to increase your flexibility and eat lots of collagen. If you do all those things, then your bones will be strong and healthy. Get outside a lot as well, your bones will be strong and healthy, and you shouldn't have any breaks. And if you punch someone, it's going to hurt a lot more because your bones will be hard and your fist won't explode into splinters. Don't punch people. So thanks a ton for watching guys, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did then please leave a like, please share it around, that helps me immensely. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought or hit me up on social media. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter in the links in the description down below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want more like this, hit the bell button if you want notifications and stay tuned for more videos on um, bodybuilding, strength training, um, parkour, martial arts, productivity, technology biohacking, nootropics, working online, all that usual stuff. If that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching and bye for now.